Well then, it's been a very long time, but I think it's time for another commentary. Castlemania Retrospective, obviously a blatant ripoff of the AVGN, a sort of meta joke, you know, I'm essentially saying word for word things that AVGN said in his review uh, in order to parody the idea that Bors copies AVGN word, I'm sure you get the point. By this point, I had started a more personal YouTube channel and was trying to get all my friends both watching it and involved in it. Uh, because of this, one of my friends managed to stumble upon the iRat Gamer videos and inexplicably found them pretty funny without knowing anything about AVGN or any of what I was parodying. I think he liked the swearing and the dirty jokes, which is kind of ironic because I, I didn't come up with that. He would always quote my videos back to me, which is of course very flattering whenever that happens, but I was at least somewhat aware that he was taking them as serious reviews. He was very excited when I said I was about to release a new one, this one, and, uh, and I believe he watched it the day I uploaded it. He watched it at school, so I was there. I remember he laughed at the clip of the nerd moaning at the start, I think he just thought it sounded funny, but at the end he said it got kind of boring. I think that is the biggest flaw of this episode. It's pretty high in production value, but kind of short on the laughs. I have a bad feeling I made the episode entirely so I could make that Castlemania instead of Castlevania joke, which isn't really that clever at the end of the day. When it comes to a joke where something is ripped verbatim from something else, the joke can only really last until the point where the viewer recognises that it's a direct quote. After that, the joke can't really get any funnier, uh, and it just becomes a waste of the viewer's time. Plus, if you're like my friend and don't know AVGN, then it's not really a joke at all. References should last long enough to be recognisable, but not so long that they wear out their welcome or make those that don't recognise them feel bored and out of the loop. It's exactly the same deal with the Navigator segment later on, and Navigator is way more obscure than AVGN is. You have to have seen his Castlevania review for it to even make sense. Even then, it's way too long. Anyway, what about the rest of the review? There are some pretty decent moments. As I mentioned before, it's definitely a step up in production value. I got a brand new, much more expensive camera, and I think this was the first actual video I made with it. But I hadn't quite gotten synchronizing my hand gestures to the speech yet, and you can see there are a lot of random cuts throughout the video where it needed to be corrected. This here is RuneScape music. Yeah, I was a RuneScape player as a kid, and I always kind of gravitated towards pretty sounding music, so this one was actually one of my favorites growing up. It's called Scape Sad, and I don't actually know where it plays in the game. Uh, I only played it from the jukebox thingy that you get. The bat on the startup screen was actually a real glitch in the video. I think I had the frame rate set too low on the capture or something, so instead of flapping its wings, it's just sort of spazzing out. But it is in true irate gamer fashion to blame the game for something that's not the game's fault. This sequence here where he goes to do some research, uh, first of all, this was the room I did the previous New Super Mario Bros. video in. Uh, you can tell by the matching curtains in the background, and just like the end of that video, you can see I clearly neglected cleaning up when it was time to film. I think, unfortunately, the purpose of this sequence was less to make a joke and more to see if I could film a CRT without it flickering or blowing out the exposure. I think I tried to justify it as a joke of him being really technologically inept and using very obsolete technology, but in reality I was just feeling nostalgic for Windows 98 and wanted to film a CRT. Filming a CRT does require some preparation. A CRT is essentially a strobe light that flickers so fast that it appears relatively persistent. To do this it flickers, you know, several times a second. Uh, your camera too picks up light uh, at a constant rate every second, so set your monitor's refresh rate and your camera's shutter speed to the same rate and hope for the best. It can be complicated by the fact that your camera might say 60 but mean 59.2 or something, and you can see in a couple frames that the effect isn't perfect, but it's far from the worst you can do. As far as not blowing out the exposure, you could simply turn down the brightness on the monitor. It'll look really dim in person, but show up fine in the video. Or do what I did, which was to film the monitor in a normal state and then turn down the exposure on the camera until you can see the screen properly, and then just composite them together. Both methods have their pros and cons, but I think the biggest problem here is that I left the screen in colour while the rest of it was in black and white. It was intentional to make the fact that it was Windows 98 a little clearer, uh, but in hindsight it makes it look more fake and more obvious that it was composited. I may as well have filmed the screen turned off and just stuck footage on top of it. The lighting is also a little bit off, so it doesn't really look the greatest, but hey, I was able to shoot a CRT. Oh, what do you even care? It's 2015, who even has a CRT anymore? I think this sequence, from a joke perspective, is almost a joke. I mean, it's a setup that could definitely go somewhere, but it just kind of doesn't. You see the IRAC gamer look something up on antiquated technology, and then he just comes back. The setup had no real payoff. He really should have made a punchline like, man, modern technology is great, or even something more irate gamery like, whatever happened to Windows 1 through 97? But he doesn't. It was almost a joke, but just not quite. <laughs> A couple of rehashes of older jokes, like struggling to use the emulator and getting confused about the demo, they're okay. 
But the evil overlord bits, I do like them. If there's ever been a consistent goal in the IRAC gamer, it's been to take those pretentious, over the top, save the world plot lines that internet reviewers inject into their videos and defuse the hell out of them. I don't know why, but every reviewer does them. I guess I just never got the appeal. Overall, the episode is okay, a little slow in parts, but there are some decent enough jokes. Provided you know the source material, for my friend all those years ago, I can see how there's probably not enough to hold you over if you don't. Unlike some of the others, particularly the later ones. Alright, so what's next? Well, I do have plans to make a new IRET Gamer in the near future, hopefully, uh, but I do also like doing other things. I've just released a brand new music album called Crystalis, and it would mean the world to me if you could go and check that out. Uh, also, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter where I post about all my goings on, that's right here. Let me know if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to talk about, I'll happily do so. And yeah, check out other things, and uh, I will probably release another commentary in a few days. So look forward to that. Alright, bye guys. <laughs>